G'day trendsetters, John with Gravel Cyclists. Behind me is my Richie Breakaway Gravel Travel Bike. Now in the past I've shown a video where I packed this bike, but in this video I'm going to unpack the bike and I thought what better place to do it than the confines of my hotel room. Before I begin, I wanted to mention the case. This is not the stock case that comes with the Richie Breakaway. This is the S&S hard shell case, it is superb. I uh, replaced my Richie case several years ago. And as you can see, I've also decorated it, which makes it a lot easier to find in the airport baggage claim area. Popping open the case, and as you can see, I do uh, utilize the room in this case to its uh, maximum potential. I put up a lot of extra things inside. So I'll just take some of the padding out of the way. Saddlebag, water bottles, different sizes. This bag contains the cassettes and chain and a couple of tools. Seat post and saddle. Some extra food. Lara bars. Bottle cages and quick release skewers for the wheels. More food. Inside this package is a uh, box with just various adapters and whatnot. A spare pair of pedals. I usually take two pairs of pedals. I might rewrap my handlebar tape at some point, so I brought along some handlebar tape just in case, and the white tape, naturally. SRAM ETAP batteries. Lube and such. Couple of spare tubes. The SRAM ETAP derailleur, rear derailleur. Sealant. This is uh, Orange Seal Endurance Formula. Double wrapped just in case it leaks. The rear half of the bike. This is a tubeless kit. Uh, it carries a needle injector, a couple of tools like valve tools, etc. It's by Milkit. I have reviewed this on the gravelcyclist.com website. Rear wheel, as you can see here, here's the front wheel as well. And one thing about the wheels, there is sealant inside these wheels right now. And uh, all I've done is just release all the air pressure out. The seal is not broken, thankfully. In the face of the case, I've got some spare tubes, some uh, spare tires. You never have enough tires. These are Panerasa Gravel King mud tires. A spare Panerasa Gravel King regular tire. This is yet another pair of pedals. I'm a bit of a uh, spare parts monger, I will admit. I'd rather have it than want it. And finally, the front half of the bike. So in a moment, I'll unwrap everything and start piecing everything together. So you might be thinking to yourself, hang on a minute, where are his handlebars? Well, I packed them separately inside my second suitcase. They're right there, along with a pretty serious stash of tools and my Bontrager TLR flash charger pump, along with bike clothing, regular clothing, and two pairs of shoes. I pretty much uh, have both bags close to the weight limit of 50 pounds. So here is the frame itself, along with the handlebar and pump and tools. You might be thinking, man, that's a lot of work uh, to get this bike uh, set up. Well, it is. It's gonna take me probably about 45 minutes to build this but it saves a lot of money flying. The airlines like to charge some pretty exorbitant fees as soon as you mention the B word being bicycle. First up, I need to remove all of the protective covering from the frame pieces. Notice that the front derailleur stays in place. The two halves of the frame are held together by the seat post and by a bracket at the bottom of the bike. I 
Right now I'm just tightening down the clamp bottom bracket. This will hold the bottom half of the bike together. Don't want to go too hard, but that's pretty good. There's no way that's coming undone. For the top half, I just need to slide the seat post down and I have uh, a little piece of plastic there which is, indicates my height of the seat post. So I just twist it down and just line it up. You want to make sure the junction there between the two halves is nice and tight, which it is. Then I'll just tighten those bolts down. Incidentally, these are M6 bolts and I've substituted mine for titanium. Okay, that is the frame together. Next, I'll mount the SRAM ETAP rear derailleur. And if you didn't catch it, I did post my long-term review of SRAM ETAP to gravelcyclist.com recently. Now, I do use um, frame protectors at the fork and the rear triangle, just in case someone decides to squish the bike. King titanium cages. And I'm also using titanium bolts. In fact, I've got titanium bolts everywhere on this bike. I just want to minimize rust, etc. Next, I'll mount the handlebar. And notice I keep the uh, brake levers locked down against themselves with a couple of zip ties. A little bit of security. And I'll just have to remove all the bolts from the stem and install the bar. Now I do have the bar marked, so I know exactly where to orient it when I reinstall. I try and tighten the bolt so that tension is distributed evenly across the entire bar, so look, there's a little bit of a gap on one side, I will just loosen off a bit and tighten at the bottom to compensate. Now I'm not over torquing these, I'm not using a torque wrench, but I've got enough experience with this where I can tell by feel that it's tight enough. It might be a little bit difficult to see this from this camera angle with the available light, etc. but I'm gonna run the front brake cable. So it's a bit of a tight squeeze. And uh, there's a barrel adjuster under the stem. There's a slot. I ideally want to have the slot lined up so the cable pops in. Okay, it's in place. Here we go. Next up, inflate the tires. And I've already got some air in the uh, secondary cylinder. Bontrager flash charger. TLR flash charger pump, that is. Which I have reviewed before here on gravelcycles.com. He's holding about 40 psi, which we'll do for now. Next, I will install the cassette onto the rear wheel. And I always bring along a pair of latex gloves. <clears throat> and in case you're wondering, I'm installing a Shimano 11 to 32 11 speed cassette. And finally, the lock ring. And I happen to have with me one of these fantastic Abbey tools, the Crombie. I've got the, uh, the chain whip and the cassette tool, which will do Shimano, SRAM, and Campagnolo cassettes. And it's uh, super handy to have for traveling. And I did review this a long time ago on gravelcycles.com. So if I remember, I'll link it in the video description below. All right. Ready to go. Next step is installing the wheels onto the bike. And this is not a through axle bike or anything complex like that. It uses the old uh, nine millimeter quick release. And if you're wondering, these are M2 Racer quick releases, which uh, was from a California based business that uh, specialized in weight weenie parts in the early 2000s. Unfortunately, they're out of business. And the wheel set is an American Classic 
Argent tubeless and the tires are Panarasa Gravel King SK. But hopefully whoever's watching this finds this to be somewhat interesting. Tighten down the rear quick release. Beautiful. It's starting to look like a bike. There's a look at the M2 Racer quick releases. They're very lightweight. And I've been using them for several years on this bike and never had a problem. This is where it gets fun. Try not to get gloves onto the white handlebar tape, which is actually pretty great right now. I really need to replace this tape. There's nothing really wrong with it, but uh, I prefer to use Physique brand. Their uh, flat white tape, the super light two or three millimeter version, really resists dirt super well and stays clean for a long time. And here I've got the SRAM ETAP batteries for the front and rear derailleur. I always uh, use the protectors supplied with the batteries to keep everything safe. Being very careful not to get grease anywhere on the contacts. So pop open the protective cover on the derailleur, front derailleur. Carefully pop it into place. Perfect. Now let's just test the functionality out. Make sure everything shifts okay. Oh yes, the rear derailleur shifting perfectly. And the front is as well. And I just charged the batteries before this trip, so everything is in good order. Now it's time to install the chain, and I'm always very careful doing this, especially in a hotel room. This chain has been used. It's still got plenty of life left in it. And it has the uh, master links ready to go. Giddy up, chain's almost ready. Look how greasy it is. I really should clean this chain, probably. Anyway, it's a good chance it's gonna get really dirty tomorrow in the rain. And finally, to join the chain together, there is the master link, and I, uh, I break the rules sometimes. I reuse these things a few times. And then I'll use my chain tool, and I'll place it either side of the master link, and then spread it apart, and it's in place. There you go. A bit of wiggle. It's nice and loose. Now I'll just put the chain onto the chain ring. There you go. Tension's good. Give the drive train a quick test. Sorry for being out of focus. Look at that, it shifts onto a 32 and they say it couldn't be done with a short cage SRAM ETAP rear derailleur. Perfect. We're almost done. We've almost got a complete bike. Pedal time, these are the latest iteration. Well, they were about two years ago anyway, of the Ritchie WCS pedal. I have another set of these in my stash with me. They are the first generation, they are lighter. So I just finger tight them for now. And uh, I won't show you the details, but you just tighten down appropriately with your eight millimeter wrench. And non-drive side. And the crank, in case you're wondering, it's an FSA SLK Adventure crank with a 4630 chain ring, and I have reviewed it on gravelcyclist.com. And uh, it's all up pretty well, barring the bit of the uh, plastic covering, protective covering falling off there. That wasn't FSA's fault, that was my fault because I rode this bike a few weeks ago in regular sneakers because I left uh, the, the shoes at home. What an idiot. And obviously my crank got banged up. Brilliant. We're on to the front brake. Two tools we need for this one. We need a four millimeter Allen key and a little wrench to uh, help tension the brake springs. These are cantilever brakes. But uh, first of all, I'm going to attach the uh, quick release mechanism here. I've never had this fail on me, so fingers crossed it doesn't fail. That wouldn't be too good, would it? Okay. All right, so the brake straddle cable is in place. So I use the uh, adjustable wrench on the flat surface of the brake here to set the spring tension. So that feels okay right now. And this also goes into centering the brake as well. And use my Allen key to tighten down that side. 
side's done. Again, I'll take the wrench and put it onto the flat of the brake here. My hand's in the way, probably. And tighten it down. Okay. Now, let's see how the brakes feel. Look at that, I got it perfect first time. That's amazing. They're perfectly centered. Unbelievable. Now it's time to do the rear brake and uh, I'm just gonna set up this straddle cable while there's no tension that's in place. Now I'll take the um, brake and run it into the guide on the frame. It's in place, hopefully you can see that. Might be a little bit far out of reach there in camera. Then I'll join the rear cable. Just pop the cable in its guide on the frame and thread the Ritchie brake connector together. Now to tension the brakes. And this is a repeat of the process I did in the front of the bike. So again, take the wrench onto the flat of the brake, tighten it down, then turn the flat so I've got resistance. In other words, I'm winding up the spring, tighten down the fixing bolt. That's one side done. Then I want the pads to sit closer to the rim, so I'll just back off the barrel adjuster here. I love these brakes. These are the average Shorty Ultimate. They're super easy to adjust. So there you have it, the Ritchie Breakaway Gravel Travel Bike Ready to Ride. It's a pretty sharp looking bike as well, and if you want to see complete details of this bicycle in its glory, I'll link in the description below a video where I go through all the details of this particular bike. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel, and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they are released. I'll see you in the next video.